And here in Numbers 13, starting at the 25th verse, it reads, And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told them, then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified, very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, uh, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Uh, 14.1 says, so all the congregation lifted up their voices, and they cried. And the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and uh, the doing of his holy word. Father, I come in the name of Jesus once again because you allowed me to, and I thank you, Father God, for your blessing to allow me to stand, to be used as a vessel to declare your word to your people. Father, I know that your people stand, Lord, in need of a word. They stand in anticipation to hear a word from God. And so, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that as I humble myself beneath the cross, Lord, I pray, Father, that you would stand in me and declare your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the people not hear me, but let them hear you, God. Hear you clearly to where they get revelation, Lord, and they are assured, Father, it is you that is speaking. Because some things that will be said, Lord, only you know those things by way of conversations that you have with them in prayer. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, for the power of your spirit, Lord, to prevail in this place. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise and we honor you on this day. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And again, uh, we uh, we partied. Some people partied in pre preparation for moving over into 2023. Uh, some people prayed in order to get over into 2023. Some people were pushed across the line, so to speak, in order to make it here in 2023. We made a lot of preparations. We we said things in which we were going to do or which we had anticipated that we, we should do. But now that we're over into 2023, 23. We're right on the cusp uh, between 2023 and 2022, and we're here in the month of January, here on January 
8th, the second Sunday in this new year. So now that we've crossed up over into uh, 2023, then the, the question becomes evident, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? See, see, this is the thing, because some of us, we, we felt the pressure of the enemy trying to keep us on the other side in 2022 and all of the issues and, and, and troubles and tribulations that we were faced with, that the enemy tried to continue to push, push them up in our face all the way to until the end, trying to keep us from crossing over. But now that we've crossed over, uh, again, the question becomes, what are you going to do now? And that is isn't necessarily a question that is only coming from God, but then that is also a question that comes from our enemy because he recognizes that now that you've stepped over, hallelujah, and, and if you have no connection to God, if you ha have no direction, the enemy, he, 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 he's playing with you. He's asking the question, what are you going to do now? Yeah, you're here, but, but what are you going to do now? Do you know what your next steps are? Amen. Do, do you know what you're going to do? Do you know how you're going to obtain the promise that God has spoken into your spirit? That becomes the question. And so for uh, the topic on this morning, I'd just like to share a word with you based on the subject matter. It's your move. Amen. It's your move. Amen. When we play games or a strategy, when we do different things and understanding that we have an opponent on the other side, typically the opponent would move, but then it comes a time to where it's your move. What have you been strategizing? Do you have a plan in order to win this thing? Now that you have crossed over into 2023, what are you going to do now? It's your move. It's your move. It's your move. It's your move. See, understand that there are moments in life when we require direction for our next steps. We require directions for our next steps, and it would seem that we've run out of pavement, and we are considering what's next in life. Uh, we've come to a point to where, uh, again, you, you may have matured and you've endured a storm, and, and, and now what's next? Because for some of us that have endured storms, there are debris all over the place, and, and we may have to clean up. We may have to rebuild some things that were torn down as a result of the storm. And see, although there is promise ahead, there are problems all around us. See, see, again, there's this promise that God has spoken into our lives. But in order to get to the promise, we have to get beyond the problems. We have to get beyond the problems. And see, many of us, we've been distracted by the problems, and we've taken our focus off of the promise. And we can see this in Scripture today, as God has brought his people, the children of Israel, to the place to where there's promise, to where he indicated to them it's a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He's brought them to the place, and he sent spies to spy out the land and to bring back good fruit, hallelujah, to affirm that this place that God has described to the children of Israel is real. He told them to bring back fruit. Amen. And when they brought back fruit, they talked about that the fruit was good in the land. In verse 27, it says, then they told him uh, and said, and they said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And, it, and this is its fruit. And so, therefore, what God said was affirmed by the proof that they had brought back. Amen? He, he, they brought back proof. Now, watch this. We must understand it is, it is moments like these when we've crossed over and we're considering our next steps that where we come to understand that our next steps must be calculated steps. And then they're calculated steps, steps that are directed 
by God. And see what a calculated step is. A calculated step is something that you consider before you move. See, many of us, we, we move without calculations, just kind of moving on around, bouncing like a, a pinball in a pinball machine. But then when there are moments to where you realize that you might be on your last leg, this might be it to you. This is a decision that you have to make. You've come to a point within your life as you, you've grown up to where you need to make a decision as to the path that you are going to take. And then are you going to continue to just date or are you ensuring that, that you want to make sure that, that, that you have all of the elements of a husband, that you have all of the elements of a wife. I'm tired of playing games, game over, and now it's time for me to make a move. In other words, it's time for me to make a decision. Amen. Who am I talking to uh, this morning? There are calculated steps. You know, I have to decide what I'm going to do, what type of job I'm going after, whether I'm going to go after a job or is this the moment for me to go out on my own and do my own thing as an entrepreneur? Is this the time for me to write that book? Is this the time for me to apply for that better job? Is this the time for me to go back to school? And then I need to make some calculated steps. You see, when we consider next steps, something I want to share with you, and, and maybe this applies to you, maybe it doesn't, but this is something that God has said in my spirit that somebody needs to hear. Amen. As you consider your next steps, God is saying that your next steps need to be in commune with him. Hallelujah. It needs to be in commune with him. In other words, your next steps requires prayer. Your next steps requires prayer. Amen. You, you must understand that as you are moving to the place of promise. You're coming out of deserted places. You're coming out of a wilderness. You're coming out of places and where you were challenged, but now God has brought you to the cup of the promise, and you recognize that in order for you to get to the promise again, there are problems all around, as was indicated in the scripture, as those who had gone in and spy out the land, all except Caleb, they started to talk about all of the enemy territories and all of the, the, the different people that they would have to navigate to instead of just focusing on the promise. And see, when you focus on the promise, you're focused on God. When you're focused on the problems, you allow fear to come in and you're focused more so on uh, your enemies rather than what God has declared as truth within your life. And so as you go into prayer, this is uh, essentially you, you, you're going into prayer because you realize that as I go and advance towards promise, even though there's problems all around, I recognize that I, I need cover. Hallelujah. I, I need cover. And she recognizes that this is a submission to someone else's protection. When, when we say that we need cover from someone, when we're on the battlefield, hallelujah, this again is a submission to someone else's protection. In other words, although I am able to see, I can see what's in front of me, but I can't see what's on my six. I can't see what's behind me. There's some things that I am unable to see. Watch this. I need you to watch me and protect me from those things that I cannot see. Amen. God, I need you to flank, look in the flank areas. I need the, the, the places that I'm not able to see. I mean, the distances I'm not able to see. I need you to help me. I need you to protect me. I need you to watch me from those things things that I cannot see and understand that Jesus needs to be our lookout. He needs to be our lookout and we must understand that we are in need of, again, someone who's going to cover us, someone who has the capability to cover us, someone, amen, who, who always hits the target. 
understand where you're going is going to require a different view. In other words, it's going to require a different outlook, a, a different set of eyes. See, the natural eyes, uh, they're not going to help you. And see, um, watch this, in the midst of darkness, to be able to continue moving forward when they're on the battlefield, and, and in order to be able to see the soldiers put on infrared glasses. We, we probably all see these types of movie, movies, military movies, where they go into battle, and in the midst of darkness, we have soldiers, they put on these glasses that enable them to see in dark places. And, and these, these glasses enable, not only enable them to see in dark places, but it also allows them to move forward and not backwards. It also allows them to move forward and not just only stand still. And so likewise with God, we put on our spiritual glasses that come by way of prayer and revelation to give us the necessary insight to help us along our journey. So you see, we're going on a journey, and again, we're going through some, some enemy territory, and so we're going to need some help. We're going to need some cover. We're going to need someone to direct in to order our steps. But, but not only uh, as we move forward are our next steps that in a prayer alone, but we also need to ensure that as taking our steps that there's some planning that is necessary. See, many of us, we've, we've moved without plans. Many of us, we've moved without plans and we've made progress. But recognize that, that the movement that you need in your life today to, to enable you to make the type of progress that you need to make is going to require a plan. See, see again, many of us, we've moved and we've made some progress, but the thing is, because a plan wasn't instituted, because a plan wasn't involved, therefore we made progress in places or parts of our lives in which we wish we had not made any progress. We made some progress in, in doing things that we had no business doing. We made some progress in failing at some things. We made some progress in hurting people's feelings. We made some progress in sin. But God is saying in order for you to move in 2023, in order for you to make the type of progress that I've ordained for your life, you've got to follow me. You've got to enable your ear to be able to hear the word that God is speaking into your life. In other words, in order for you to do that, you have to stay focused on the goal and recognizing now that you have a goal, the goal is in association with the plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, they are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And so as we look into the word and we see these 12 who have gone and spied out this land that God had told, uh, had promised to Abraham and told him that it would be there for his descendants, this thing now is starting to manifest. There are only moments away from obtaining this promise. But the question is, what is your next move? How are you going to obtain the promise? Are you going to listen to the bad reports of the people, or are you going to walk by faith and not by sight? Not only knowing that God has brought you through deserted places, knowing that God has provided for you manna from heaven, hallelujah, while you are out there in the wilderness, you could not provide for yourself, you didn't know where your food was coming from, you didn't know where your provisions was coming from, there was nobody there to help you, mama couldn't help you, daddy couldn't help you, the friends wouldn't answer the phone, but now God steps in. And as we continue to trust in God, hallelujah, he allows us to wake up in the morning and that proverbial manna falls from heaven. You didn't know how you were going to eat, but then somebody called you and they told you, let me take you to breakfast. Let me take you to dinner. You don't have to worry about a thing. It's not that they were so good, but God has 
made himself available working through other vessels, hallelujah, to ensure that you had the provisions that were necessary. And so again, we have to consider these next steps, next steps of prayer. Some may say, well, I'm not a prayer warrior. I, I don't know how to pray like the deacon. I don't know how to pray like the pastor or the evangelist. But God is looking for some, those who will come worship, worshiping him in truth and in spirit. All you have to do is show up and just reveal to God what's on your heart. And as you reveal to God what's on your heart, you can indicate to God, Lord, I've made some mistakes, but I know, Lord, that you're able to cleanse me. Even though I've had the desire and I've tried to cleanse myself, Lord, I failed. But I know that it's something about you, Lord, that you have that refiner's fire that's able, Lord, to, to get the things out of my life, Lord, that I've had problems that continue to hold on to me. Lord, I know, hallelujah, Lord, that you're able to wash me clean. You're able to dip me in the blood. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I need your help in this endeavor. Hallelujah. Because, again, as I come to you in prayer, I come naked and unashamed. Lord, I know that as I present myself, Lord, that you'll speak into my life as I have an encounter ear to hear words from God as I'm able to turn off the radio, as I'm able to put down my phone, as I'm able to close out social media. Lord, I know that you have a word. And so once we move from the prayer and we progress and take another step, then we come to the place of planning, and we know that God has a plan for each and every one of us. He has individual plans. He has collective plans. God has plans to move us. And then there's the third thing. We've prayed, and we've moved forward, and we've come to the point of planning, and then the third thing is after we receive the revelation from God by way of prayer, we come to the point of planning and we know that God has a plan for our lives. Now the third thing is the pursuit. Uh, what are you going to do next? What's your next move? And see, when we're just out there moving and bouncing around without a plan, we are progressing, but we are progressing in nonsense. We're progressing in mess. But then when there's a plan, when there's a, watch this, when there's an orchestrator of life that can direct you where you need to go, where you need to be at a particular time in your life, even though there are problems all around, he's able to navigate you through the problems. So yet again, there's the pursuit. Uh, you guys probably know you've been in church for a while. Maybe some of you have not. But there's a story about uh, this man named David. He had become king. He was anointed by Samuel to be king over Israel. But yet while even though he was anointed, he had problems. He had trials. He had tribulations. And watch this. He had to be patient in order to receive this promise of God's anointing for him to be king one day. And so one day while David was out with his men, uh, something happened. There were raiders that had came in and they took David's wife and all the wives of those that were with him, their children, and everything that they owned. They raided their camp. And so when they returned, everything and everybody was gone. And all of the men, these were grown men, men of war, they started to cry. And they looked at David and they said, essentially, this is all your fault. We followed the leader, but we were led to lose our families, our children, and our possessions. And so it says here, in 1 Samuel 30 and 6, And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David, watch this, it says, But David, in the midst of all of this, it says, David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. 
he encouraged himself. See, sometimes you can't just cry to get through. You've got to pull up your pants. Amen. You've got to tighten your belt. Amen. You've got to pull up your bootstraps, and you've got to make it happen. Even though these things have been taken from me, I serve a God. Watch this. I serve a God who covers me. And although I didn't see who did what, I know I serve a God who sits high and looks low, and his eyes go all throughout the earth. And so, therefore, I can go to my God and ask what I need to do. And so, although David, he lost everything, David sought God in prayer. He sought God in prayer at this moment. He didn't have a pity party. And then he sought God in prayer. Watch this. And he asked God, shall I pursue God, shall I pursue? David, he didn't jump ahead of God. He didn't try to jump ahead of the problem. Can you imagine, and and, uh, many of us, we may have a testimony, how we stepped out in front of God. We didn't pray, and when we stepped out in front of God, amen, we got whipped by the enemy. Because we were directed. And rather than being directed, we acted as though we were deranged. And so David asked the question, shall I pursue? And it was through prayer that he received the answer to his inquiry, to pursue and to reclaim. So God had given him the okay, and when God gives the okay each and every time, you will be successful. God, I pray. It is my prayer on today that you make us blind to the problem of this world and enrich our faith to focus on your promise to deliver. Too often we're focusing on our problems. What if this doesn't work? What if I lose this? What if this causes a hardship for me? But yet and still, we're focusing on all of these things, but God has already said you can have it. It's yours. You can have it. Don't worry about anybody taking anything from you. It's yours. See, although we have problems, you can be reassured, you can be encouraged. Jesus says in the word of John 16 and 33, he says, although as declared by himself, he says, in this world, you will have tribulations. Not, you might have tribulations. He didn't say you're not going to have tribulations, but watch this. In this world, you will have tribulations. Then he goes on and he says, in the midst of the tribulation, he says, but be of good cheer. Why? He says, because I have overcome the world. See, you missed that. See, although he was talking to his disciples and he told them, yeah, I know you're going to deal with tribulation. He says, be of good cheer. He didn't say be of good cheer because I've overcome tribulation. He said, be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. And so anything that comes against you in this world, I've overcome it. I didn't only overcome this this bully in your life, but I've overcome the world. I've overcome the bully to the bully to the bully. And then I've overcome, I'm sovereign. And then I'm overcome, I've overcome all things that can come up against you. So be of good cheer, hallelujah, because nothing can overtake you if I don't want it to. And so as we consider again the next steps, as mentioned, prayer, planning, and the pursuit, something else that we have to consider in combination with the steps are the stages. For every step, there's a stage. Let me say that again. For every step, there's a stage. Because we step into a thing, but the stage are the results of what we step into. And so, therefore, when we step into prayer and we start to pray and we start to seek the Lord's face, watch this. When we step into prayer, the end result from prayer is going to be revelation. Let me say that again. The end result of prayer will be revelation. And watch this. In Proverbs 25 and 
2, it says, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the glory of kings is to search things out. And so therefore, again, as we step in by way of prayer, we're searching things out. God, what would you have me to do? Where would you have me to go? What steps would you have me to make in my life, Lord, towards the promise? So Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says, the Lord our God has secrets to no one, known to no one. We are not accountable for them, but we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. And so God will give us revelations of what it is for us to do, the path to take, the people to keep, continue to keep out of our lives. And then he'll tell us where we need to go, what it is that we need to say, the types of steps that we need to make, the things that we, uh, amen, we, we need to get out of our lives in order to stay on the path to promise. And the result of planning, moving on again, the, the stage, we, we moved on from one stage, and that was the revelation stage, which is associated to prayer. Now, as we move to the next step, which was planning, the associated stage with planning is restoration. Is there anybody that needs to be restored? See, sometimes we don't recognize that we need to be restored, but when we've not been living in accordance to the will of God, we know that we've been living wrong, then we need refinement. We need restoration. And see, restoration has to do with redemption and resurrection. To make something old or broken, we God wants to make it brand new in your life. Is there anyone in here, anyone on the call, anyone that's watching, hallelujah, Hallelujah, to where you had circumstances in your life to where at one point you were on one level, but because of the storms that you endured through the course of 2022, that you have been broken, you have been worn down, hallelujah, and you need to be restored, not just by anybody, but you need to be restored by the one who made you himself, the Potter, you need to be fixed. And Lord, I don't know how to fix myself. Lord, when I try to fix myself, I hurt myself. But Lord, I need your hands upon me, God. I need you, Lord, to smooth things out in my life. Lord, I need you. I desire you. I recognize that there is a promise, a place, a land, a blessing that is flowing with milk and honey, and I'm tired. I've just come through a storm to where there was turbulence. But, God, I know that there's a promise, and you have a blessing for me, God. And so I'm here. And so there's a restoration. And understand that restoration has to do, again, with redemption and resurrection. But, too, God is going to make you brand new and reveal to you that there is a lasting value in you. I don't care what people have said. Some may have said that you're no good. Some may have said that you're all used up. But when God is done with you, when God finishes refining you and polishing you, when God restores you, not only will you be brand new, but God would help you to recognize by way of this process that there is lasting value on the inside of you. See, God doesn't waste his time with things that are of no value. And so as God has his hand upon your life, you can get, be guaranteed that God is going to refine you if you stay upon the path. If you continue to be obedient to the master's will. And see, as God is preparing your blessing, he's also 
preparing you for the blessing. Let me say that again. As God is preparing your blessing, he's also preparing you for the blessing. And see, like with Israel in the midst of this moment, they come to this place and God told Moses to send in spies. Moses sent in spies, a, a leader from every tribe. And they had all gone over. They were told to bring back the fruit of the land in, in a report. And so, again, like with Israel in this particular moment, in order to obtain that prepared blessing that God has for you, you, you have to overcome some battles along your pathway. It was already stated that there are enemies in all of these different areas as we move forward towards the promise. But, but like Caleb, Caleb was the one who spoke up against all of the other 11. Like Caleb, we must embrace our battles. Uh, don't allow the battle to make you fearful, but then that's the moment to where you need to ensure that you rely on God and be more faithful. Don't be fearful, but rather be more faithful. And know this, that your battles are going to make you appreciate your blessings. Again, your battles are going to make you appreciate your blessings. Caleb had learned through his journey, uh, going through the deserted places, coming through, amen, the Red Sea into the deserted places in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst of nowhere. He recognized and understood that the Lord fights for his children. There were battles of the Amalekites, battles of their enemies, and God fought the battle. So again, he recognizes that the Lord fights for his children. So therefore, the battle doesn't belong to us. The battle belongs to the Lord. And see, on the battlefield there, a battlefield, something that I refer to as battlefield debris. And so these are things that are intended to deter you from reaching your intended destination or goal. There are going to be some things on the battlefield, again, that are intended to deter you from reaching and achieving your goal and your intended destination. On the battlefield, there are mines that are going to be planted by the enemy that are purposed to destroy you. Well, what are you talking about, Pastor, when you say mines? We, we know that when, uh, in the natural sense, when men go into battle, there are mines that are planted by the enemy. And when someone steps on the mine, then they blow up and it becomes a problem. And, 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 and not only does it become a problem, but it dis enables you from moving forward to the promise. But as we look at this thing, hallelujah, in the spiritual realm, and we consider the minds, some of the minds in the spiritual realm are those of disbelief and doubt. We, we, we have to ensure that we navigate around these particular minds as directed by God. Scripture tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean back to our own understanding and and in all of our ways, not some of our ways, but as we're going down the path to promise, in all of our ways, acknowledge God, him, and he will direct our path. He's going to direct our path in, in the midst of a minefield. God can get you through. Other minds are those of worry and fear. And see, we cannot allow this fear, this thing, to forfeit us from our blessing. Hallelujah. We make it over into 2023. We need to ensure that we spend time with God in prayer to obtain the revelation that's necessary for us to move forward and to do the planning that we need to do. And after we completed the planning, now it's time to move. It's time to pursue the promise that God says you can have. Isaiah 7, 41, 10, don't be afraid, 
for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Hallelujah. So we've got to give God some praise. Amen. Rather than focusing on fear, we've got to be willing to move forward in our faith and not allow fear to forfeit us from moving forward. Hallelujah. In obtaining the promises of God. And then there's the mark of rebellion and complaints. Don't allow rebellion to uproot the faith required for your blessing. Psalm 68 and 6 says, God places the lonely in families. Watch this. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy, but he makes the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. There are minds such as poison. When people are trying to poison what you're trying to do, by way of a poisonous word. Although you make progress, there are still those who are promoting going back to Egypt. And this place called Egypt is the place that calls you pain. As we consider the word today, Caleb spoke up and he says that we can take the land. Surely we can take the land. He, he quieted the people, let's go up at once, he said. Let's go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome all of these bad reports that everybody else is declaring. And then he moves on, and all the people now, they start to weep, they start to cry, and they said that we should have died in Egypt. And then they start looking for a way to go back to Egypt. They started to look for a way to get back to the place of hurt, amen, that they were comfortable with. And see, God is trying to get you to the promise. He's trying to get you to the promise. And so even before we can start doing the pursuit, as we've gone through and we've prayed, God, fix me. God, give me direction. God, help me. I'm trying. I continue to do this thing my own way, and it's not working for me. Lord, I need your help. I need your help. I need to understand the plan. What steps? Where do I move? How do I move? How fast do I move? Where do I need to pause? Where do you want me to go? And now I've come to the place, Lord, to where you've been given, you've given me revelation, Lord, where I've come to the place now, Lord, to where you've given me the plan. You've restored me. Lord, now I've come to the place of pursuit, the reformation, Lord. I've been, I need to go through the process of being reformed. And once I'm reformed, therefore, I am redeemed. And I'm ready now, Lord, to make the pursuit. And see, when we look at reformation, reformation means to put an end to an evil by enforcing or introducing a better method or course of action to introduce or cause to abandon evil ways. Is there anybody that needs to be reformed today? God is saying it's time to move, church. And as we prepare to move, as we prepare to make these next steps, there's a process that we have to follow. And the first step, by way of prayer, the second step, by way of a plan, the third step is to get it going, the pursuit. But before we can move, we got to seek God. And so that's why here in the month of January, we're being called to a fast. It's time to make a move. Maybe there's somebody under the sound of my voice. After hearing the word and considering where you are in your walk with the Lord, what God has spoken into your life and told you that you can have, but then there are problems all around in order for you to obtain that promise. You have to walk through the promise, through the problems. But in order for, in order to, again, obtain the promise and you're walking through the problems, you have to have faith in God. You have to know that you're not alone. 
And so yet again, maybe there's somebody under the sound of my voice to where once uh, you uh, had the faith to where you believed God, but then by way of storms and by way of things in which you were not able to control in your life, you come to a point to where uh, your faith is a bit weak. And you need to be prayed for to be strengthened. Now's the opportunity for you to come to the altar. For those of you that are on the call, I'll pray for you. For those of you that may be watching on live stream, I'll pray for you. Maybe there's someone who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins, and you have just been uh, informed that God is on your side, and you know that there's something better for you but you don't know how to obtain it. Now's the time to come into the Lord, the God in whom we serve, Jesus Christ, who's sovereign, who's overcome the world, who died on the cross because he loves you, came from heaven, took on the form of man, only to go to the cross to pay for all of our sins so that we may live life with him eternally in heaven. If this is you, now's your opportunity. Hallelujah. All heads bowed. I know sometimes it's hard to make this walk up in front of everyone watching. I was in that place once before. I want you again to give an opportunity to those that are here. You desire prayer. If you can just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Those of you that are on the call, if you can just lift a hand by way of an emoji or you just, hey, Lord, I need prayer. We're going to go before the Lord to initiate and get things started. We're taking the first step by presenting ourselves before the Lord. Father, we come in the name of Jesus today to glorify you and to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you have spoken and you've declared. We pray in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, as we humbly submit ourselves to you. We thank you for allowing us to cross over into 2023. And, Lord, now we want to move forward. We've heard the word, we've received the word, and now as we consider what our next move is, we recognize that our movement, Lord, cannot be without your leadership. So we pray in Jesus' name that as we humbly submit ourselves, Lord, and trust in you, we pray, Father, for each and every person, every hand that was raised, Father, every individual that desires prayer and knows, Lord, that there's an element of weakness that they have. I pray that you would strengthen the weak areas of each of us. I pray, Father, that as we stand trusting in your word, as Caleb did, we recognize, Father, that we are enabled to go up and to possess the land, Lord, the promise that you declared in our hearing. I pray, Father, that as each and every one of us makes the commitment, Father God, to be disciplined and fast so that we may hear a word from you, Lord, closing out each and everything that will try, Father, to, to come upon us, to divert our attention, we pray in Jesus' name that you would give us the strength to shut down social media. We, give you, we pray, Father, that you would give us the strength, Lord, to resist those things that our bodies pray for. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as we go down this path, pushing away certain things that we often desire, Lord, making time for you. But Father God, as we pray in the name of Jesus on today, we pray, Father, for an impact to be made to our lives, that you would give us revelation to see, Father. Help us in the ability, Lord, to be able to make the right decisions that are best for our lives, that will lead us, Lord, to where you would have us. Father God, God, we thank you and we give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Father, there are some that are among us that come, Lord, and they open their hearts unto you as you search their hearts by way of your spirit. I pray that you would go through and that you will repair the brokenness, God. As we spend time with you daily, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that we will be refined. As Moses spent time with you, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that, that you would allow the Shekinah glory to shine upon our our faces, Lord. And although there's problems all around us, help us to stay focused, Lord, on the promise. We thank you and we glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. We pray today. Amen.
God bless you. God bless you. So once again, I know in times past, uh, as it relates to the past, uh, we dictated certain things uh, from a standpoint for you to consider. Uh, no meats, no sweets, and no alcohol. Well, God has laid it upon my heart to share with you that it's your relationship. You need to consider what you should give up. Amen. And there, there's something. If you consider that no meat, no sweets, no alcohol is what's best for you, then that's what it should be. But as you you, you know that thing that, that that continues to 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 cause you problems, that thing that calls you in the midst of the night, that thing that you have to have that you you stocked up on. Amen. You know what it is. And we need to ensure again that God is first as we make our steps. And so as we go through uh, the month of January, God is preparing us. The pursuit starts in February. Amen. Right now, the prayer and the preparation that comes by way of the revelation, the planning and all these things, uh, they, they happen here in January. Get ready for the pursuit. Get ready for the pursuit. Once again, I, I pray that uh, you've been blessed by the word. Uh, I apologize to those of you that may have gone online and didn't work for you. You need to see what the deal is there and get that straightened out. Uh, again, um, I'm going to be praying for you and believing God with you as we prepare to move forward. And so, again, I thank you for joining us. And I want to pray us out, Father, again, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, for all that you've done. I thank you, Lord, for uh, your movement. I thank you for your Holy Spirit and the revelation, Lord, that only you can give. I pray in the name of Jesus as we trust you, Father, and you order our steps. Lord, we shall follow that path to be led to the place of promise. Father, where we, along the way, are able to glorify you and to praise you and to shout hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we will surely go in and possess the land. Despite the bad reports of others, Lord, we'll trust you. We thank you and we give you all of the glory, all of the honor and praise. Be with us as we depart from this place. Allow us to go to our destination safely. Keep your hand and keep watch over each and every one of us. We love you. We just give you the praise and we honor you today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. To God be the glory to all those uh, that have joined in with us on today and to next time. And I'm praying for you. I'm praying that you will commit to this season of fasting as God is preparing us to, for our next move. God bless you. Until next time. And it's coming after this.